Hello, and welcome to the SharePoint Framework and Viva Connections Bi-Weekly Sync. It's April 7th, 2022. I'm your host on this call, Patrick Rogers. We've got a great call for you again this week. Uh, our agenda is going to be updates across the Patterns and Practices program, updates for SharePoint Framework, some new community samples, another community info. We'll do our picture time in together mode, and then we've got three great demos again for Christoph. Nandeep and Paolo. Uh, so three good demos there. Looking forward to the property pane portal ACE with a card view and multiple quick views. And then Aviva Connections as an input form for data and action. So really excited to see all three of those scenarios. If you are interested in participating in the Patterns and Practices community, uh, certainly I would encourage uh, everyone out there to reach out about doing a demo. There's a link down there in the bottom right corner of the slide, ak.ms slash M365 slash request slash demo, M365 PNP, excuse me. Uh, but we'd love to have the demos. It's really exciting to see all the great work and all the great ideas you have out there for your customers and your companies. Um, so as long as it's okay to share with the world, would love to have you demo that work on this call. So please do reach out and get registered and we'll get you signed up. We are sometimes excuse me, booked out uh, a month or two, uh, depending on what's going on. So don't be discouraged. We'll get you a slot, get you booked, and have you on the call just as soon as we can. Of course, we also welcome your contributions on GitHub. That comes with uh, reporting issues, submitting pull requests, or helping others with their issues and questions. And as with everything, we appreciate your feedback. How are the calls? How is our documentation? Where else can we help? And of course, positive feedback is okay, too. If you like something we're doing, let us know. Perhaps we can do a bit more of it. Lots and lots of links on this screen. The main one you need to know is ak.ms slash m365 PNP. That's going to get you the all up landing page for all of the patterns and practices program stuff spanning our developer videos, which are topic focused videos uh, to get you started on various developer activities such as auth or adaptive card extensions or SharePoint framework, things like that. We've got our community videos, which are going to be the recordings of this call, the other Thursday call, our Tuesday calls and various other community calls and community videos. Those are going to be more informational um, and less sort of developer topic focused, but they usually include the great demos. So uh, some good developer content there as well. Of course, uh, all of our open source uh, organizations, PNP, Office Dev, Microsoft Graph, and SharePoint, welcome your contributions uh, and feedback across all those areas. And as well, check out all of our great sample galleries. It's a fantastic place uh, to see how others have solved similar problems and get started. Uh, when you are building a new project, you can see how others have approached that. Again, ak.ms slash m365 PNP will get you links and info for all of those things, as well as links to all of our community calls uh, as well, which are covered on this slide. So lots of great community calls out there. You'll note we've reduced the numbers a little bit from last year, number of overall uh, different calls, but we are covering the same topic. So I invite you to attend as many of these as you can. And if you can't make it, again, these recordings will be available there on the YouTube channel, usually in about 24 hours. As well, really exciting announcement here for the Unified Sample Gallery. So this is a, a sample gallery aggregating samples for uh, various technologies across M365. So graph samples, SharePoint framework samples, uh, all the stuff from the great uh, the PNP sample galleries, uh, all aggregated in one spot, easily findable, searchable uh, by topic, by author, by technology. That's ak.ms slash m365 slash samples. Really encourage you to check that out. It's a great way, again, to find the samples you're looking for and see uh, what else might be available to help you get started on your work. Next up is a reminder of our Tuesday calls. These Tuesday calls are the Microsoft 365 platform calls hosted by folks from Microsoft. Uh, the call is on 12th of April. That's next Tuesday at 8 a.m. Pacific. Uh, this is the weekly call there, the recurrent invite, ak.ms slash m365-dev-call. And uh, next week, we're going to be talking with uh, Owen and Sai Bhavha Reddy on building in meeting documents signing app for Microsoft Teams, and then Waldeck and Anoop on building well-being solution with Teams and Viva Connections. Excited to see both of those presentations, as well as get the community updates uh, that always come out on the Tuesday calls. And then we'll uh, hand things over to David for sharing is caring. Thank you, Patrick. Well, well friends, welcome to the call again today. Uh, sharing is caring is a program that is here to provide you hands-on guidance on how you can get more involved in all of those initiatives that Patrick was mentioning. Now, 
why do we have this? Because we understand that there are hurdles to getting involved at times. Perhaps you've never interacted with GitHub, never done a pull request. Perhaps you do want to present on one of these calls, but it's your first time. All of these initiatives and programs and sessions are a safe space opportunities, absolutely free. We're going to provide you guidance together. We're going to actually make the tasks and do the PRs together in a safe space, non-recorded environment. It's a great way to collaborate with members of Microsoft, the MVP community, and your other community members uh, that want to collaborate. Absolutely free. Next week, we've got our Power Platform Samples first time contributor session. So go and register for that at aka.ms forward slash sharing is caring. And we'll schedule any day now the Ask Me Anything on Viva Connections extensibility. So very, very exciting stuff. Now, once you have contributed in many, many levels, we want to celebrate that. The recognition program is here to provide formal uh, and official recognition for all of the amazing work that you're doing. It's powered by Credly. Yes, that's Credly, the same organization that provides you those certification badges from Microsoft when you get certified. So all of your community contributions will sit right next to them. You can attach them to your LinkedIn, share them on Twitter, put them on your website, share them with your manager, ask for a raise. It is going to be awesome. So we do need you to opt in, aka.ms forward slash m365pnp dash recognition. We'll tie that to your GitHub account and your other contributions you're doing, and we will send those badges out. You've been seeing them. They're going to become even more opportunities and fun campaigns throughout the year. So no charge, absolutely free, aka.ms forward slash m365pnp dash recognition. Patrick, back to you. Awesome. Thanks for that, David. And love to see uh, both the sharing is caring and recognition programs just continuing to grow. So great work uh, to everybody there. Next up is going to be Vesa with updates on the SharePoint framework. Excellent. So let's go to the usage of the slide. So no actual numbers on this one again, but we have tens of millions of monthly active users on extensibility built with SharePoint framework. So not, uh, and that's third party extensibility, meaning partners and customers who are building a stuff. And we did again all time record this Monday, uh, which is really cool. Uh, so the growth curve is quite cool looking uh, as we keep on growing uh, on the usage worldwide. Um, not significant amount of updates on the roadmap slide and uh, roadmap side of the house. We will release the next version of 1.15 preview. Um, not today, maybe maybe next Tuesday. We were initially thinking this week, uh, but we had some people uh, out this week in Richmond, and and we are trying to figure out, uh, making sure that the version is working properly. In that version, you will get the first time the new component type, which is for customizing uh, lists and edit forms and view forms in, in lists and libraries. I did a live demo on that one on the Tuesday uh, platform call this week. So check the recording out uh, if you're interested in seeing in that in practice. And of course, as part of 1.15 is estimated to be released in end of June. It will have Node note 16 support, TypeScript support, a lot of additional settings and capabilities for viewer connection. So we keep on introducing additional features and capabilities um, as we move along within this preview period. But that's it from my side. Let's move to the next one. Great. Thanks, Facebook, for those updates. And really looking forward to 115 release. A lot of great uh, stuff going to be included in that one. So excited for that. All right, PMPJS client side libraries version 3.2. We're going to release that on April 8th. That's uh, tomorrow, this Friday. That's got a lot of great stuff in it. We got a lot of good fixes in there, a lot of fantastic documentation updates. Uh, really excited to get that in there as well. Uh, we've got, uh, I think, the ESM for Node 16 or Node uh, what, uh, 12, 14, 16. Uh, I think we've got that all sorted out. We had some some friction there when we first released. Uh, so really excited for this release. I uh, hope you could check it out. We'll have all the details in the change log and the docs once we get those things pushed out. And I want to remind folks, we do have the nightly builds. So npm install at pmp slash sp at v3 nightly. Those are built uh, nightly, as the name would imply, but gives you a chance uh, to try out stuff that we might have uh, fixed a bug and merged that change. But the uh, the actual, uh, it won't be included in a major release until whenever, but you can always check out the updates each night. So encourage you to try those out and look forward uh, to that version 3.2 release uh, tomorrow. So great stuff there. And with that, we'll go to CLI for Microsoft 365, uh, released version 5.1 with a bunch of new updates for validating SharePoint framework projects, uh, improving your SP 
improved upgrading of your SPFX projects, new settings to automatically copy device code to the clipboard, and then removed commands uh, that are obsolete uh, for some of the uh, APIs that are getting deprecated. So fantastic to continue to see these updates flow through as well. We've got npm install uh, dash g at pmp slash cli dash microsoft 365 at latest. We'll get you the stuff there. And remember, there's a fantastic Docker container capability for the CLI. So if you're running Docker and using Docker, you can just load up a, a Docker uh, I want to call them VMs, but that's not right. Docker container for uh, to use the CLI and get all the latest features without having to keep uh, your local system up to date. You can just run that straight into Docker. So excited to, uh, again, see this continue to grow. Release notes there at the bottom, pmp.github.io slash all of those things, hashtag V510. So check out the CLI. Uh, fantastic updates uh, continue to flow into that from tons of great community contributors. So thank you. And speaking of great community contributors, uh, lots of great work continues for the SPFX reusable controls. We've got two sets of things. There's the React controls, version 3.7.2, and that's uh, those are designed to be used in the body of your web parts or application customizers. So you've got a variant theme provider, a Monaco editor, which is a, a really neat thing to see integrated there. Uh, enhancement for multiple controls, uh, SPFX uh, 114 support, and various other fixes, release notes there. And then we've got the React property controls. These are designed to be used in the edit pane of your web part. That's version 3.6.0. Also has new Monaco editor support, supporting SPFX 114 and some various other fixes. You can find the release notes there. Thanks to everyone that contributed on the reusable controls. Love to see these continue to grow. Full details there on the two links below and the Twitter at M365PNP controls as well. You can follow that for the updates. Moving right along to modern search, aka.ms slash pnp dash search for all the latest details. We've got a 4.6.0 beta is out. That's the uh, going to be the April 2022 release. Still can't believe it's 2022 myself. Uh, PNP modern search release latest to see uh, all the docs there. Thank you to all the folks that have contributed uh, to the modern search. And it's exciting uh, as well to see this continue to grow. Everything in PNP continues to grow and get better thanks to all of your contributions. And it's just really exciting to see for all of these components. I know I keep saying it, but I, I genuinely mean that uh, the work everyone is doing across these is just fantastic. And it's really fantastic to see search with this 4.6 beta coming. So check that out to see all the latest fixes and features. As well, there's the uh, 3.23 branch, but that is not really getting updates. Do encourage you to move to the V4 stuff uh, when you're able. Uh, obviously, you know, not everybody can drop everything and upgrade immediately, but uh, it's definitely uh, encouraged to get to the V4 branch of things for modern search uh, as you are able. And with that, we'll pass things over to David for SPFX samples. Excellent. Thank you, Patrick. Our one loan update for this week on SPFX ACES is a amazing ace from Derek Hatch Peterson. This ace is very, very cool because it will allow you to hide the ace based on user interaction. So you can kind of see the story being told there in the screenshots, but if you had an example of needing to register for something and then the ace no longer serves a purpose on the screen, whoosh, like magic, it goes away. So very, very cool sample. Check it out. Always welcome for more uh, AKMS forward slash SPFX aces. Patrick, back to you. Awesome. Thanks for that great update. And the whoosh sound is optional in your ace if you don't want the uh, sound to play there when you hide the ace. Optional picture time. Base, I'm going to let you go ahead and take over the presentation and we can do our together mode shot. So if you're interested, go ahead and turn on your camera. And it uh, looks like yep. folks yep. are doing yep. that, waiting for Base to find buttons and click them. <laughs> Still waiting. Base. There we go. All right. All right. Here we go. We're getting All there. Right. We're getting there. So wait, wait, uh, wait. Not yet. Let's wait for the uh, seats to fill in. And before we start recording, um, I will start. Actually, the recording already. There are still some free seats. Uh, There's still some free seats. Uh, if you enable the video, I will enable mine as well. And there we go. Now we're getting everybody in here. Am I getting there as well? Oh, some ghost on the front row as well. Let's do some hand waving, everybody. Thank you for joining once again. Awesome to have you in this call. Such a brilliant thing to have real faces, not just the names and 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 short as the names on the on the call. Thank you, everybody. We'll grab a key animation out of that. So thanks, everybody. Patrick, let's get back to you. Fantastic, very cool stuff. I'm just going to go ahead and ask uh, Christoph is going to be our first demo. If you want to go ahead and take over the screen and start presenting. 
and tell us all about Property Pain Portal. Hello, and uh, thanks for having me. My name is Christoph. Uh, I am an applications architect at a law firm headquartered in, uh, in Seattle and called Davis Wright Tremaine. And today I'm going to talk about uh, the specific property pain, so what you called earlier the edit pain in, uh, in the SharePoint uh, web parts and uh, how I, uh, I combined it and made it work with React Portal. So um, a few words about uh, so my recently published solutions. Uh, I've, I've been working uh, with SharePoint. So I started working with SharePoint in April uh, of 2004. Uh, I've released a number of solutions over the years, but uh, uh, more on my personal uh, blog or my uh, personal stuff. And uh, this year uh, I've done more heavy contributions to the community. And uh, so this is um, a short list of what I've done. Uh, and in particular, that was also uh, 2022 was my first year to start publishing uh, known modules. So today, the ones we're going to focus on are uh, the property po pain portal. So this is a node module that you're going to uh, install through an N NPM install. And then the sample, the related sample that you can find on PNP is React PPP. And then uh, whatever, because it's supposed to be a series, uh, of uh, different controls I'm going to showcase. So uh, right now there's one, but uh, that's supposed to, uh, more is supposed to come in, uh, in the future. I'm mentioning also some uh, other work here because it's kind of related to what I'm presenting today and uh, I think it's worth taking a look. So the property pane wrap is another solution that is supposed to help with the property pane. And uh, I'm also listing here the cherry-picked content web part because it's also a solution that is using the portal. So uh, other stuff uh, to explore if you're uh, if you're interested. Okay, so the objective for today, property pane portal. So we are looking at the right hand side of uh, of this web part. So it's the one that you trigger when you click on this little. Uh, pen here in the top left, and it's going to open the property pane. And what the property pane is, is uh, that configuration form that allows you to enter specific uh, values, specific parameters that are going to uh, to customize your web part. So in my screenshot here, for example, I have picked uh, San Diego. Did I mention I'm uh, out of San Diego? <laughs> uh, nice reminder here. and. Uh, so I pick the location and this is rendered here. So I chose to render it as a map. So uh, here in the in the main web part. So the objective here is to create those custom controls. And uh, the idea here with the property pane portal is that you can add as many controls, any kind of control you want from any kind of library, you can insert them in the, in the property pane. So if we take a, a closer look at the, the code, uh, on, on here on the left hand, hand side, you can see an example of a property pane with some controls, description, slider, checkbox, drop down. So uh, I would say some standard uh, controls. And if you look at the code in uh, SPFX, this is what it looks like on the right. So uh, it could be a, a little bit surprising at first, but SPFX is not using directly elements or React components. It uses this uh, these wrapper functions. So a kind I would say it's a kind of flow code here we are having in the property pane, where uh, uh, the SharePoint framework offers this wrapper function that takes care of all. Uh, you know, uh, everything that's happening behind the scene. And all you have to do is uh, uh, include that JSON to configure the uh, the control. So th this is very uh, convenient, uh, very, uh, very easy to use. The issue is what if you want to ins uh, insert a control that is not covered by the out of the box uh, functions? So that's one of uh, the questions here. Other question is, what if you want some interaction between the controls? So for example, you have a cascading dropdown. You want to select a site and then you need to select uh, a list in the site 
or you want to select country and then you want to select uh, a city in that country. So all of this is not covered by these out of the box functions. What you can do, uh, so what Microsoft uh, offers you is to create custom controllers. So you have all this extensibility model that is available within uh, the property pane. Simply, if you start using it, you're going to see that it's not very straightforward. It takes some time uh, to get into it. So, uh, and uh, maybe uh, I'd be interested, uh, you know, um, uh, for for you uh, li listening to this presentation, I'd be interested to hear how you you deal with that. So, how when you have to a need for custom controls. How do you insert them? How do you build them and have them in the property page? Here, uh, I just mentioned that uh, on PNP, and it was mentioned a little bit earlier in the call uh, in your release. Uh, in PNP, we have those two packages. We have the reusable React controls that go in the main panel of the SharePoint framework. And then we have dedicated property pane controls that are supposed to go in the property. So uh, that's currently, uh, I think, I, I would say uh, probably the best solution I've seen around. The issue here is that, uh, so you're going to use the ones on the right to, uh, to build your property pane. The issue is that you're limited to the ones that are made available by the library. And uh, the other issue is that maybe you already have your own set of your own library, your own set of controls, and these are the ones that you would like to use. So that's what I'm going to, to demonstrate today. Uh, it's how you can use any controls you already have and you can push them uh, to, to the property pane. You're not limited to uh, this, uh, this set of out-of-the-box controls or the property pane controls from, uh, from this package. So what, what I'm going to do, as an, just as an exercise, what I'm going to do today is instead of using the package on the right, which is the one you're supposed to do when you do property pane, I'm actually going to take the controls from the package on the left and insert it in the property pane, just as a demo that uh, you don't need those, uh, those specific uh, property pane controls. Oh, okay, so uh, it seems that it's demo time. Let me try and switch to my demo here. Okay. So, uh, so this is my demo. This is the code part, and uh, so hopefully we'll we'll have some time to get back to uh, to it. But for now, let me go to, to the workbench here, and I have already started this uh, this demo, this uh, web part. So I'm going to click here on uh, on the little pen, and I'm opening the property pane controls. Uh, I'm here in. Uh, in light mode, uh, I have the same thing when uh, in dark mode works too. Okay, so what you see here, I have uh, four, I have created four pages for this uh, specific demo. Uh, first page, I have the PNP controls, so those are the ones we just talked about. Not the ones on the, on the right, we are using the ones on the left. I have also regular HTML controls. So uh, this is a big evolution we've seen uh, last year that uh, now that we're not supporting Internet Explorer anymore or uh, Legacy Edge, we can start using those directly instead of going to a library, we can start using directly the HTML5 controls here uh, in, uh, well, in our solutions and in particular in the property page. So that's exactly what I have here. Uh, let me do a demo while I'm here. So for example, I'm going to pick a start date of uh, April 11th here, and then I'm going to pick an end date, and you see that uh, all the dates before April 11th have been disabled. I'm just using the uh, here the capabilities of HTML5 controls, and I'm going to pick this one. So again, here you just have out of the box HTML controls. Okay, I'm going just to play with the toggle here, which is uh, well a little bit uh, more. Uh, advanced customization, but still out of the box uh, HTML controls. Okay, another one, uh, the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. So Microsoft Graph Toolkit has a number of controls and I can use them here directly. So I'm going to type, let's have uh, some very famous people in my team here. 
uh, let's say petty and okay. And uh, well, it's not uh, spectacular here, but you can see that the web part has been updated with the value. Okay, and the last one I have, I have uh, this fluent ex uh, UI example. So that's actually the one that uh, with which I started because I, I was creating a solution for app source and uh, I used uh, North Star, uh, Fluent UI North Star at the time. So uh, this is, let me just play with the color picker here. So uh, again here, I'm just uh, going to the Fluent UI North Star page and doing a copy paste and the control is working here. And uh, let me move back to my presentation. Okay, so let's take a look now at the code. So a, a few words about portals. Uh, I, I put a general definition here, uh, a technique to transport to a distant, seemingly inaccessible place. In our case, so we are uh, in the context of React and uh, UI libraries like React and Vue have such capabilities. And uh, so you can see just a, a very simple uh, sample here. It, it comes from React DOM, create portal of child container. And what it does, it allows you to take that child that uh, may reside in one place of the DOM and transport it to the container. So this is a technique that is uh, used in general for tooltips and panels. Uh, that kind of thing. The idea is that you don't necessarily have full control of the container. So this, what it allows you to do is have the child in your own branch, in your own tree of the DOM, where you have full control. So you're going to apply, uh, you, uh, you can apply context, you can apply a theme, you can apply maybe some, uh, uh, manage some state, and then just display it in its container. And in our case, the container is going to be the property pane. So the idea is we, man we manage the child wherever we want, and then when it's ready, we push it to the container. And uh, the container is going to have, so we're talking about that gateway that is allow us, going to allow us to go, uh, to go to the container, and the container is going to have a beacon that identifies the proper location where the control uh, or the set of controls are supposed to lay. Okay, so uh, in terms of uh, architecture, this is what uh, it's going to look like. And here, so uh, I'm going to just look at, uh, at this um, column here, uh, the property pane. So this is where you would have the uh, built-in controls I showed earlier. So it's going to be property pane text, for example. Those uh, controls made available by SPFX. But in addition to that, I will have that custom control that is going to serve as a beacon. And it's going to be the same re reusable control host that we're going to put wherever we need it. And then we are managing in a separate place here. Uh, that is going to be more the body of the web part. We are managing that these controls that can come from different uh, controls libraries. And this is what the portal is going to do. It's that uh, those yellow arrows that you see here, this is going to transport your controls in place in the property plane. Okay, um, in terms of installation, so again, this is a, a node module. So you're going to install it. You, you would uh, uh, provision your SharePoint uh, framework web part and then install property plane portal. And then we are going to have, uh, as part of this uh, module, two components available. You're going to have the property pane host that is going to go in, uh, in the property pane. That is going to be that bacon I was talking about, uh, for the recipient, recipient of the control. And then uh, in uh, the web part body itself, we are going to have that gateway, so property pane portal components that is going to take care of sending the uh, uh, the controls to the right place. So uh, uh, in, in, the, in the interest of time, I'm just going to stick to, to the slides here, uh, not show the, uh, the actual code, but it, it's supposed to look the same. 
So uh, this is what it would look like in the property pane. So you would have property pane host that is just the generic control. You see here that I am uh, trying to implement four different controls from MGT, person people picker, group picker, the team speaker. And uh, so the only property and I need to pass to that control, to that uh, generic control, is the context of the web part. So what it really needs uh, is just the ID, the instance ID of the web part. I'm passing the whole context because uh, it's kind of simpler. But this is the only thing you have to do. So the name of the property and then the context in the property plane host. And now, if I move to uh, the body of the web part, then uh, the body is going to look like that. So same, I have my property pane portal component, which is a, a React function component. Also, uh, it's going to uh, leverage the context of the web part to be able to talk to the host. And then I just include, so within my property pane portal, I just include my controls the same way I would do it uh, if I was uh, uh, putting them in the body of the web part. So uh, uh, here, people picker. Uh, I, I have so these examples. For example, if you go to uh, mgt.dev, if you go to the playground of mgt, you're going to go, take those samples, and you could just do a copy paste and put them, make them available in the property pane. The only additional thing you need to do is to add that data property here. That is kind of is going to give uh, the control. Uh, or it's going to give the property pane portal the address of the destination. So in the, let me go back to the previous slide. Here I had uh, the name of the property in the, the property pane. So this is uh, the address, the destination, and I'm just entering the address and it's going to go to the right place. Okay, so that's, uh, that's it. Uh, 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 a few, yes, a few thank you, a few special thanks here to the people who have helped me on the way, encouraged me. So uh, you recognize your name here on the on the slide. Uh, please try this uh, this property pin portal. It's uh, I would say it's not you know the the main uh, the main path. It's more out of the box uh, thinking. So. I'd be interested to know how far this can go. OK, thank you. And uh, back to you, Patrick. All right, great stuff. I'm really uh, sad that I wasn't able to see the demo in Teams, but I'm definitely going to follow that up on the recording to check out uh, all the details there. It sounded really great, uh, but I look forward to seeing it actually work. That's a problem on the, my local Teams. But with that, we're going to move to Nandeep. Uh, with ACES card view and multiple quick views to display the uh, M365 groups in a tenant. Nandeep, if you're ready, you go ahead and take over the presentation. Yeah. Sure, thank you. So, hello all, uh, Nandeep here. Firstly, thank you very much for having me here to um, showcase our sample on Microsoft Viva connection adaptive card exploring Microsoft 365 group. So, this sample shows how to build an adaptive card extension which is s with a card view and multiple quick views to display the microsoft 365 unified groups in the tenant of which the currently logged in user is a owner or member and then we will see what are the benefits of this a bit later so quickly like myself nandadeep nasan i'm microsoft mvp for office apps and services um, I'm based in Pune, India, and I have been mostly working with uh, SharePoint and uh, Microsoft Teams and Microsoft Azure. And I'm privileged to have this sample developed along with Smita Nansen, who is also a Microsoft MVP for Office Development and working with SharePoint for many years now. And here are our social ha media handlers to get in touch with us for any later discussions. So summary of uh, this particular uh, solution. So this sample shows uh, how to build the adaptive card extension with the card view and multiple quick views to display Microsoft 365 unified groups in a tenant of which um, the current logged in user is a owner or a member. And the concept behind this sample is concentrated around Microsoft 365 groups because once you are in a group, you can be benefited from group connected services such as SharePoint, Microsoft Teams, Yammer and Planner. Uh, a bit of history behind developing this um, ACE sample is that our organization is on journey to Microsoft 365 adoption and uh, 
we are rolling out various services to our users and we, we have a mixed set of users in our organization along with IT. We also have users from non IT departments like shipping and packaging and uh, like information workers uh, working from office. We also have frontline workers using mobile experiences as they do not have access to the machine all the time. So there are two reasons behind implementing this solution. Firstly, that to support the needs of information worker as well as the frontline workers, we were looking out to implement cards on uh, Viva connections dashboard so that we'll be able to uh, handle both. And secondly, that as we are on the journey to Microsoft 365 adoption, we want to promote the Microsoft 365 apps and services to our users. We do not want them to restrict the creation of SharePoint sites, Microsoft Teams, Planner or Yammer communities. We want them to explore them by creating what they want. However, there are again downsides to uh, this thinking too, because as we uh, do not want them to restrict the users from uh, using group connected services, we also want to have some kind of an control over it by implementing Microsoft 365 group expiration policy. And with the increasing uh, usage of Microsoft 365 groups and Microsoft Teams, the group expiration policy provides a kind of a way to clean up the unused groups and uh, teams that we have. So uh, Microsoft Teams group expiration policy can help remove inactive groups from the system and make things very much cleaner. And because when a group expires, all of the associated services like uh, the mailbox, planner, SharePoint site, or a team associated with that also gets deleted. But before doing all this exercise, no one remembers how many groups they belong to as a part of SharePoint site or Microsoft Teams they, they, they have created so far. Because since we are not restricting everyone get started, they start creating their teams, their SharePoint site, but no one remembers um, how many of them they have created. And then this S solution will provide a consolidated view to an individual to understand the Microsoft 365 unified groups in the tenant where they belong to as a owner or a member so that they, they can take a made better decision during the group expiration because uh, until the email comes to you and you start analyzing which this group is about, uh, you can take that decision uh, by looking at this um, a solution. Another important thing to consider is from the content and the user experience point of view. Because the excessive content gives rise to a content sprawling. So the content sprawl, that means a situation wherein excessive number of abandoned or rare, rarely used content in the form of Microsoft SharePoint sites or Microsoft Teams exist within the organization. And then it will surpass your original content. Even those kind of test content will start appearing in, into your search results. So for example, if you have a consolidated view, something like this edge solution that gives visibility into the content to individual on where they are contributing to such as the excessive content to avoid the content sprawl. So at least they can self educate themselves and start removing the content which they don't want. So these are the driving factors behind um, creating this as solution. So quickly about this uh, my three M365 groups is like this is the adaptive card extension component type uh, in um, shape shape on framework which enables um, developers to build a rich experience for Viva connection dashboard as well as the pages and when we decide to create uh, a solution we create we get a chance to create um, card view with um, basic card template, image card template, and then the uh, primary card template. And each of these views will render differently and have the different con constraint based on what data they can be uh, provided in the template. So this solution is developed with a primary um, text template. And then the uh, here are some kind of a major highlights of this S component that it displays currently logged in users uh, Microsoft 365 unified groups in the card view. And then we do have an action button on the card view to browse to the groups of which the user is owner or a member. Again, it has got a quick view to show the Microsoft 365 group details and then a buttons on it. Uh, on onto those quick view to take the user to the associated SharePoint site or if it is connected with a Microsoft Teams. So uh, this sample is developed with SharePoint Framework version 1.13.1 when it started supporting the S and it is available to download and use under the Viva Connections Adaptive Card Extension uh, sample repository at this mentioned URL. So with that, let, let's have a quick demo of this sample and then we will get into the code. So 
this is how uh, the, the sample looks like. So this is the Viva connection dashboard that we have onto the uh, SharePoint home site. And this is the ACE solution that we have developed. So this one is standing along with other uh, kind of cards that, that can be placed onto the um, visual of, of a dashboard. So once we click on uh, view my groups, it will show all of the groups. But before that, it will show all of the groups where you are a owner or at least a member. And then it will give the um, um, give like how many you are owned by and how many you are just contributing as a member. Once you click on those view my groups, it will give you the bifurcation of how many groups that you own and then you will be able to view from here. And then again, how many groups you are a member of and then you will be able to view it from here. So once you click on view, it will give us a basic information about that group the uh, description of the group and then the visibility of that group, whether it is a public or a private group. And then, for example, if that group is connected with Microsoft um, SharePoint site, it will uh, give you the option to open that uh, SharePoint site like this way. At the same time, for example, um, if it is connected with uh, Microsoft Teams, in that case, it will give you the uh, option to uh, open that in Microsoft Teams. So once you click on here, it will take you to the regular experience and from here you'll be able to open up that uh, team which is associated with that site. So the other thing that we are planning to do on, on this particular um, ACE solution is that we, we are going to add the uh, group expiration date so that when prior to uh, group expiration policy triggers, we will be able to get the information about when this group is going to expire and then what are the resources that I'm going to lose because of that. So let's say, for example, I can see that uh, I do have uh, SharePoint site as well as the Microsoft Teams team here. So if I lose access to or if this group gets deleted, what am I going to lose? And then again, uh, is it worth to go ahead for renewal of this group. So all those kind of decisions I will be able to view by this kind of an edge solution because what happens usually is that we, we do get uh, the email from the uh, Office 65 group expiration and from there we, we have to remember, okay, if this was the group that I had created uh, and then what are the resources or what are the services which are which were associated with that group, start digging into the information and try to see what kind of an um, uh, group that we had created where it was associated with the SharePoint site with Microsoft Teams. So this kind of a consolidated view will give you those kind of an um, uh, fixed view. And then from there, you will be able to take a very much good decisions whether you want to continue with that or no. Again, uh, we, we are planning to add uh, renewal kind of things right from here so that once you click on the button here, the group can be renewed from here as well by, by using the graph API. So these are at least a couple of things that we have in a plan to do. But this is how as of now this group look like. And let's say, for example, if even if I again get back into uh, the SharePoint um, home side, this is how it will look when we it will get added as a dashboard web part. And this is the experience that will be seen when this particular web part will added as a dashboard onto the Viva connection. So this one will be available as a card. Mostly can be seen better with the large uh, view kind of an uh, um, large view kind of an uh, setting onto the card. But again even it can be seen um, onto the medium kind of an uh, card view. For example, if the number of groups that you belong to are very much lesser, but it, it, it doesn't, doesn't happen much of the time. We are part of various groups, so uh, prefer to go ahead with the large layout here. So uh, again, here it is the same thing. Uh, click on the view my groups. This is the Teams experience. Uh, Microsoft Viva Connections Teams experience. Again, once you click on view, this is the same experience that you get. So this was the quick demo how um, this works with that. Let's get into the code and see how the code looks like. So as I said, uh, this particular sample has been developed with uh, SPFX version 1.13.1, which you can see the reference in the package.json file. Then again, uh, we do have a few of the um, considerations from the uh, permission configuration. So we need a few set of permissions configured in the file, which is uh, which can be found under the config folder package solution.json. And then we need to have certain web API permission request um, specified here. So either you can specify group.read.all permission to read group properties and uh, membership, 
or you can specify directory dot read dot all to read the data in your organization's directory such as user and groups and again you will need user dot read dot all to read the user profiles information so these are the three or at least these two um, combination of uh, group dot read directory dot read and user dot read uh, will be needed to uh, run this um, as sample then again we do have a service created under the services folder so this service will help you to get the group related information so this service has got two major methods implemented inside it so first one is the get my member groups which will return the groups of which the current logged in user is a member of so this is a simple plain graph api call which will help you to get all of the groups where you are a member Second thing uh, or the second method that we have here is get uh, my owner groups, which is again simply written you the uh, groups where the currently logged in user is the owner of. And, and uh, just one thing here is that we will still have to use this owned objects kind of an um, API from the graph because we don't have directly um, my own group kind of anything here. So or a member of or owner of kind of anything available here. So we will still have to use owned object. And once we get that, at least we, we will have the entire information about the groups where you are a member of and a group where you are a owner of. And we can use that information in our S class. So we have this S class here. Uh, which is this file that contains the definition of S, which extend from the uh, base um, adaptive card extension class. And then we have uh, a major method here called as on init uh, that will populate the state with the group information where the current user is a member or owner. So all of the views, card views as well as the quick views are registered in this on init. And then simply we set up the context to uh, call all of the services which we have developed in the group service, which is the service. And then uh, all of the data about owners as well as the member groups can be retrieved from here and then it can be set into the state which will be later used into a card view which is implemented at this point. So this card view will display the group summary and again it will have a button to open a quick view. So uh, this, this one will give you the list of all of the groups that we have and then list a list of the groups where you are a member and a owner and then there will be a button to um, go to that members group or to the owners group and once we click that button there will be another uh, view which will be a quick view that that will be seen to us so this quick view um, it displays the groups count by the owner groups as well as the member groups so again this one is uh, supported by the uh, template which is this group uh, summary view template dot, dot json and then this json will render all of the groups that we have and then again there will be a link next to each of the group to get into the more details of that group which is our group listing view so for example if i just open up that view again so it is the quick view available which display the groups based on the selection from the group summary view which we have seen previously so example we can click on the owner um, group that we want to see or member groups that we want to see based on the selection that we have done onto our previous quick view. This view will take the action and then it will show the information about um, that particular groups where we are owner or where we are members. So it can detect uh, this detect from state that which group type we had selected whether it was owner group or a member group and from there it can go ahead and um, do the more processing and dynamically here in the on action it will uh, make a call to the uh, service again just to see that whether that particular group has been associated with any of the SharePoint site or if that group has been associated with any of the Microsoft Teams team. If so, then uh, even that icon will be rendered there and there will be a link and on click of that link, it will take you to that concern SharePoint site as well or maybe to the uh, uh, related Microsoft Teams team. And then again, we do have the uh, template available for this um, as a JSON format. So from here, it will show the information, a basic information about that uh, group, like the display name of that group, 
a description, the visibility that we have seen, whether it is a public or a private group, and then what kind of an action that we can take. So, for example, if it is associated with, with SharePoint site, we will be able to see this option. Or, for example, if it is associated with Teams, we will be able to see this option. So, this was uh, basic about the code, like uh, how this code has been developed. Uh, coming to the deployment part, so this one is a pretty much uh, straightforward deployment that we, we just have to uh, prepare um, and deploy the solution package by running the uh, commands like gul bundle followed by the gul package solution. And then we just need to deploy the generated package to the SharePoint tenant app catalog. But the major thing here is uh, when it comes to the uh, graph APIs. So after deploying the solution to the tenant app catalog, SharePoint uh, administrator needs to approve the graph API permissions from the um, SharePoint admin center by going to the advanced and then uh, API access blade. So I just want to share a word of caution here because the API used here, which is group.read.all is considered to be a risky permission level because it allows the app to read group properties and membership and um, read the calendar and conversation for all the groups. So definitely your organization's digital security team will not like it. They will raise the concern. So maybe consider uh, something like directory.read.all that allows app to read data from your organization's directory, such as users, group, and apps without going into the membership or uh, conversation kind of details. All right, so with that, here are the references, the code sample, and for example, if you want to see how this sample has been developed, here is my blog. With that, thank you very much, and um, th th thank you very much for uh, giving the opportunity to present this, and back to you, Vesa. <laughs> thank you. We moved to Paula already, so Paula, take it away. Thank you, Vesa, thank you, Patrick. Yeah, so today we uh, want to talk about how we can use uh, uh, adaptive card extensions with SPFX uh, in order to collect uh, input data through forms uh, and to uh, act against those data with uh, custom actions. So briefly, let me explain you the idea and then we will move uh, to the uh, demo side. So in any quick view in the adaptive card extensions, we can use uh, the uh, adaptive card syntax. And in there, we have uh, uh, controls and components that we can use to collect uh, input data like text field, uh, data fields and stuff like that. And I will show you uh, shortly uh, what they are. And by defining such kind of components in the UI of your adaptive cards, you can create uh, real forms, uh, including uh, data validation, uh, feedback about the validation results and stuff like that. And you can easily collect data with a unified uh, user experience, which is based on the adaptive card syntax. Then you can also configure actions, which can be buttons to submit your data or other actions, which will uh, make your uh, cards more interactive from an end user point of view. Whenever there will be an action triggered inside a card, you can easily, in the code base of your adaptive card extension, create an on action method which will intercept the action submitted by the user. And in there, you will be able to use your code and to work with your state, your properties, and invoke a backend API and stuff like that. So that said, let me show you a couple of really simple examples, which I defined just for the sake of explaining you the topic. So these are not real components, but these are just components that I created for the sake of explaining you how it works. So this is a very first and simple one where I can create and show you a, a quick view in an adaptive card extension through which I can collect, for example, the uh, uh, selection of a menu in a, a, a company food court just to make Make an example and let me just uh, pick the meat and an apple pie and I don't know a beer because I like drinking beers and when you book your lunch you can get the action of booking the lunch and you can collect the information provided by the user how can you create such a uh, solution with adaptive card extensions. Of course, you will have to create uh, an ACE with SPFX. Uh, we have already seen uh, uh, in these uh, uh, bi-weekly calls multiple times how you can do that. So uh, you use the human generator for SharePoint framework and you inherit from base adaptive card extension. And in this ACE, I defined a couple of quick views. The very first one is the choose menu quick view, which will rely on the fact that in my adaptive card extension in this state, I define the main 
main course, the dessert, and the beverages that I want to select. And in the Choose menu quick view, I will simply rely on the JSON of the adaptive card. So I uh, defined a column set in my uh, JSON definition, where I have a column where I provide the title of the card, then I have a description, and then I start collecting all of the uh, choices from my user. So I can rely on the input dot something uh, components that we have in the adaptive card syntax. And here I'm using the choice set. I will call main course this specific choice. It will be with a specific rendering style, single selection, and so on and so forth. And then I can provide the choices, which will be the actual options that I will provide to my user. I did the same for all of the other choices. Uh, keep an eye on the ID of this item. So I have a choice set for the dessert and I have a choice set for the beverages. Once I've done that in a dedicated section called actions, I can create and define an action dot submit kind of control, which will have a title, which will be the text showed in the UI. And I can then collect on, uh, on the submission of this button, the data from the UI. Mainly I'm creating a JSON object here, and I'm collecting the value of all of the fields that I've showed you before inside the structure of my uh, data object. So that when I will click uh, on the uh, submit button, the on action event for the submit action will set the state of my uh, adaptive card uh, extension component to the choices made by the user. And then I can move uh, to another a quick view, which will simply recap the options. Just one more thing, because I want to show you what you can do using adaptive uh, card extensions. Here, there is a much more complex uh, uh, scenario of a form which can show items in read-only, or by clicking on an icon, you can enable the edit form. You can play with it. You can collect uh, input data and do whatever you like uh, using a really nice UI based uh, on the adaptive card syntax. And in order to do that uh, with ACES, it is really easy and simple, again, using the JSON syntax of the adaptive card extension, we have plenty of options. And let me very briefly show you what I mean. First of all, if you think about the UI, we have the button to edit or to save or cancel the editing. Well, here we have an image, which is the edit button. And here I say that the action for this button is toggle visibility. By clicking on this button, all of these components with these IDs will change their visibility status. So if they are visible, they will, they will become hidden and the other way around. So for example, I play with the edit button and I hide myself and I will show the save and the cancel button. And when I will click on save, I will submit. You see, I have another action here. And the same happens for the cancel, which will simply revert the status of the form. Then I have a column set. I have one column through which I define the read-only version of my data, which is not really interesting. I simply have the data binding right here. And then I have another, oops, sorry, another column right here, which is the edit form, and which is the one I'm showing or hiding being based on the toggle visibility uh, selection uh, control. And here I have all of the input fields. So I can have a simple input text or a multi-line. I can have a phone field which will collect a phone number based on a regex and even providing uh, a hint in the UI to the user. I can do the same for a URL with another regex or for an email field. I can collect numbers, dates and times as well as I can provide a toggle button or a choice set as we saw before. And then whenever the user will click on the uh, action to submit data, again, as like as before, in the on action event, we can collect data and store the result in our state and then eventually in a backend service. This is just to give you an idea of what you can do and how powerful is the adaptive card extension syntax. Let me just give you a couple of links uh, in case you want to dig into this topic. And I think uh, that's it for me. So back to you, Patrick. Fantastic stuff, Paolo. Thank you for condensing that a little bit there at the end. Uh, three great demos again. So thank you to Christoph, Nandeep, and Paolo for those demos. Uh, I will look forward to watching the recordings. Hopefully everybody else is able to see them without a problem. I want to thank everybody for joining us today on the call. The recording will be available in about 24 hours on the YouTube channel, aka.ms slash m365pmp slash videos. Follow us on Twitter. Our next call will be April 21st. That's in two weeks on Thursday at the same time, 7 a.m. Pacific. Our next general dev call is going to be April 14th. That is next Thursday, same time, 7 a.m. 
and Pacific. All the community calls and all the rest of the PMP information is again available at that one link, aka.ms slash M365 PNP. Thank you all very much. Have a great rest of your week and weekend and look forward to talking soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.